Good morning, guys. It's so nice to be checking in. I'm just having my morning coffee. Seems to be the time I like to do these little vlog videos. Um, it's just nice to check in and I hope you've all had the most amazing Christmas and New Year and proper time to kind of reflect and rest. So important. Um, New Crow Hill merch is on the way. This is a super cool top, I love it. And um, things are kicking off back at Crow Hill, so we're, we're all um, back in the saddle now and we've got so many exciting, cool things coming for you guys. Um, sorry, I sit on the world's creakiest stool. <laughs> so we're gonna be sharing loads of stuff in the coming months. There's so many exciting projects coming up that we can't wait to share with you. And I'm gonna be doing a little quick uh, cello overview of the percussive sounds you can make on the cello. So we've got, um, if you, if anybody saw the live stream before Christmas, we did a guess the next library competition, which um, was one and the family of instruments that we've recorded um, at the drums. I thought I would just jump on the bandwagon here because some of my favourite sounds to make with the cello are actually really percussive sounds. So I am going to give you a quick overview of some of those sounds and how you can incorporate them in your own music or if you know a cellist, sounds that you can experiment with perhaps. It's obviously a super versatile instrument and one of my favourite things is actually exploiting those versatilities. Um, the classical style of playing is a very, very highly skilled um, technique and it takes a huge amount of dedication to get yourself to a sort of high classical level. But at the same time, I do think it's quite a narrow use of sound, albeit very What's the word? Microscopically detailed look at that sound. But I'm really interested in all the other things that can go on with that instrument. So I'm just sitting with it, it's just here. Looking so innocent. So yeah, that's just um, a quick overview. Drum Library, Adventures in Sound number one is coming out. I'm also I'm speaking to our next guest in January, which I'm so excited about. Can't wait to tell you who that is and what we're doing. Um, I've got eight, no, nine concerts to get through actually in Celtic Connections. So um, there's going to be a lot going on. I'm currently writing new music, which usually I find really enjoyable. But I'm trying to notate this for a band of nine people. I've never done anything like this. I usually just work by ear or in groups where there's lots of input from everybody. Um, and like I might bring a tune, but then it's sort of arranged by everybody. And it's not that I mean that I'm passive in that. It's just that um, I might bring half and then other people bring their stuff. And that will be happening, but it has to happen in a very, very quick time frame because we only have a day of rehearsal and, and then it's the gig. So basically I have to make all the decisions and I have to notate all the decisions, which is not something I do very often. So that is proving to be quite challenging because it's just not, it's not a skill set that I flex very often, working with actually, with dots basically. I'm very lucky I work with really amazing arrangers um, who are so skilled at this and they, they do it all the time. So I just get the joy of sitting down in my seat, the red light goes on and then I play what they've spent days articulating and describing and notating. And now I have to do that. So that's difficult. Um, so I'm definitely feeling like I'm in, um, challenging new territory. So if anyone is in that place as well, uh, I, I, I'm I, there with you at the moment. Um, I'm reading a book called Fearless, which I'm hoping might help me a little bit get over the, 
um, the fear. And one thing I've been reminding myself is that I, if I came down with a terrible illness for two weeks and I couldn't do anything, but I then still had to do the gig, we would still pull something together. So I'm trying to not be too hard on myself or perfectionist about anything because I think it's easy to, I, I mean, I, I work with the, the best arrangers. So I think that's quite difficult because I'm aspiring to something that is way out of my league. Um, and I just need to tell myself that as long as I get something done, it will be okay. So that's what I'm doing today. And hope you guys have a good one. Here's to the new year. Um, I actually, I said on the live stream, I don't do New Year's resolutions. The reason for that is because I find that it puts this weird pressure. I, or I put a weird pressure on myself when I make them because inevitably you, you fail at them. You always do, really. And I, I can see the benefit of like a reset and trying to build some good habits for a wee while. But for me, it always feels like it's too short term fix. It's never a lasting or long term change. At least I've never managed that. And I really do applaud people that have, you know, kept a New Year's resolution going literally into their life ahead. So, you know, I don't want to waste time saying, oh, I'm going to get up at 6.30 every day and I'm going to do half an hour exercise every day if in the end it lasts for two months and then I just go back to how I was before. So I guess I'm looking for longer lasting change um, and how you can implement that. I find that it has to be something that's not so abrasive and different because that, that doesn't seem to work for me. I just like, it has to sort of seep in and then it becomes really like bedded in um, or it, like it seeps in and it fills up. And then that means that you can't just lose the resolution or you can't just, you know, fail. So that's really why I don't really take part in resolutions. But anyway... That's my ramble of the morning. <laughs>